all right so at the moment i am at step number one but then you see that step number one cannot be accomplished without first constructing the cockpit so this actually gives you the option of you know kind of skipping the entire cockpit construction and just moving to step number one and constructing the fuselage but i've gone ahead with the uh, cockpit here you can see that it is beautifully detailed uh, i really like uh, these uh, little chairs out here for the pilot the co-pilot the uh, jump seat and the one for the uh, i think it's the flight engineer on the il-76 uh, it also has a little table uh, table top here uh, that's that's some nice detailing plus it has these uh, cabin walls very nicely detailed now the only point here uh, that i would like to mention is the instructions actually show you that after you assemble the entire cockpit structure uh, you need to assemble the uh, instrument panel structure which is a separate part altogether the part number h3 but if i put this uh, part here like so uh, it'll it'll be very difficult for me to paint because floor of the IL-76 is kind of grayish or maybe blackish. My reference is entirely the pictures that I've seen on the internet. So a black floor versus uh, an entirely green cockpit with painted seats. So this, if, if I fix it here, it's going to be extremely difficult for me to even mask and paint. So what I've decided is I will not fit this part. I will go ahead with the painting first. I will... Uh, paint the instrument panel and the floor uh, and the cockpit separately now a little very small but subtle issue is the instruction actually doesn't show you which direction the, the control column will fit in so it, it's a it's a tricky situation so I'm not sure if the camera catches the actual uh, entry point of the uh, control panel so you can see that that bulge is actually facing the seat so uh, remember not to place it the other way around that's the only challenge that i faced in constructing this cockpit the rest of it is just simply you know build as you go Right, so I'm at the point where I've kind of uh, painted up the interiors of the IL-76 and I have also painted the interiors of the uh, main cargo bay ho uh, hull and um, fixed a few parts. So a um, couple of issues which I faced here and let me uh, show you the instruction sheet and I'll show you what the issues were. Right, so... Um, starting from step number one right down up to step number i would say step number four out here a um, couple of things which i would like to highlight and bring to your notice so now step number one it shows part number f6 to be aligned and joined with the main fuselage but the main problem is the painting so it shows you the that you need to align the parts first and then you need to go ahead with the painting which is what you uh, any logical flow would uh, follow but because i aligned it uh, and uh, you know fixed the part before i painted it now i am in a situation where the uh, the ochre paint is uh, down under here and this part is actually gray so the ochre paint actually needs to be uh, peeping through these uh, little bars that you see out here so uh, that should be ochre and on top it should be the gray paint uh, but if you put this part before you paint 
uh, then you end up where I have. Uh, there is version number one, which is wheels down with the cargo bay door open. If you're going with that version, then you'll have to be careful of, you know, painting this before you assemble the parts. So that is one issue. A similar issue arrived when I constructed the cabin. So basically what this does is it shows you that you need to assemble all of them and then you need to come up here and attach the upper uh, cabin to the uh, navigator's uh, cabin and this is the point where it shows you that you need to paint these parts but now here's the catch if you do that you will never be able to get to those little spaces so you need to paint everything first before you assemble even a single thing in the cabin so that's the issue I faced uh, but apart from that the fit is very very nice there are some notches here on the side walls uh, which simply slot into these uh, little uh, notches here on the underside floor and uh, basically it, it's it aligns and fits very very well so no problems there but it's just the painting part that you'll have to be a little careful with okay so here we are i've been uh, plotting along with the uh, the build of the il76 and as you can see the fuselage has been constructed the cabin has been placed inside the fuselage i've constructed the uh, all four engines the engine cowlings the exhaust jet nozzles i've also constructed the tailplane the wings and also the turret portion now let me show you each of these parts one by one so basically the engine assemblies were pretty straightforward you just had to join the parts as per the instructions the fans had to be painted separately before uh, you assemble them so but then the entire uh, assembly was pretty straightforward so nothing much to it so all four engines were constructed in that particular manner so nothing challenging out there just that you have to be a little careful of uh, painting the, the the fans before you assemble them same way for the uh, exhaust jet nozzle nozzles I'm not sure if the camera picks this up but you can see the fan uh, fan blades inside there so all four of these they were also constructed just as per the instructions and these will be these will go on to the engines later on the cowlings are just a single part so they just had to be painted silver which is what I did moving on to the turret assembly so uh, these are glass parts so they have to be put in first and then the rest of the turret assembly has to take place now because this is an Indian Air Force version so the guns are not installed on the Indian Air Force versions so uh, I omitted the guns there but the rest of the uh, turret assembly is complete same way uh, moving on to the wings now this was very very detailed you can see here lots of those actuators uh, for the uh, control surfaces uh, I think there are about 12 of them six on each wing or probably 14 seven on each wing one two three four five six seven yep seven on each wing so the wing assembly was pretty straightforward you can see a lot of nice detailing in here on the wing uh, route on the leading edge slots uh, beautiful detailing here and really nice construction of the wing same way for the tail plane you can see those actuators uh, of course I ended up breaking two of these uh, because while cleaning up the flash I kind of just scraped through the two of them and hence you see that these two are missing but the rest of them are there and very nice detail on the top and the bottom and if you see the assembly here I'll take the fuselage it just slots in very nicely just press fit there you go it's just a press fit assembly and it fits very nicely but that is where all the good things of this kit come to an end and now I'll show you basically the biggest issue that I faced and that was assembling the cabin inside the fuselage now as you can see there is this little bit of space here 
and the instructions are very confusing let me show you the instructions as well so so here here's the instruction and the way it shows you to assemble I mean there are no locator pins inside the fuselage or the body so basically the cabin assembly just sits in but it doesn't tell you how far ahead it needs to go into the cockpit and that is the reason why I ended up with this uh, kind of space here uh, between the front of the cockpit and the actual uh, pilots uh, pilots cockpit floor uh, hence because of that the navigators space has also gone back by about I would say around two millimeters now that caused an issue here as well in the door but since this door will be closed so this protruding part will not be seen anyways because of that two millimeter gap the rear cargo bay door would not close and you can see that the fit is problematic out here um, it may have been my misdoing it may have been the kit but now that you see so I've had to trim out a lot of space from here and it was a real tough task to trim out the floor and the sides of the floor and now if you see if I assemble this as you can see the alignment is pretty good without uh, much gap here but on the other side you see a huge huge gap so this will be this will require some putty putty work it, and this is despite the fact that I've cleared up a lot of space here trimmed out uh, roughly about two to three mm of space from here so that is one issue alignment of the fuselage is good but the second issue is these uh, locator pins out here if you can see uh, these locator pins are so small I mean I ended up you know breaking apart one of those while fitting them and I don't even think they're they're required that much because uh, it hardly makes a difference because the wing is actually going to slot on top of this and I checked the uh, dry fit assembly of the wing that is perfect so I think I have aligned the fuselage nicely uh, it's only these gaps that will have to be filled in the fuselage uh, once I start off with the uh, filling and sanding process as you can see there is a big gap here as well so that is also something which will have to be filled now because of that misalignment of the fuselage uh, you see that this uh, there is a gap in the alignment of this lower section of the of the fuselage uh, that is the section where the undercarriage will fit in and you can see that on one side it aligns pretty nicely but here on the back there is a gap and on the other side all along the uh, the structure there is a gap which will have to be filled so again I'm not sure if this was because of the misalignment of the fuselage uh, or I'm sorry the misalignment of the cabin inside uh, I'm not sure if it happened because of that or if it is actually a fit issue but the fuselage is actually a big issue all right so here we are uh, I am currently at the end of my painting session with this IL-76 and as you can see um, I painted up all the uh, four engines the two exterior and the two interior engines on each wing uh, so these are painted up um, they're all done so it was pretty simple to paint them uh, no major challenges here so that is done and uh, really enjoyed doing that I've also painted up the tail plane um, you can see the leading edges have this uh, the chrome finish or the silver finish and I've also painted up the edges with the orange the insignia orange that uh, the IL-76 tails of the Indian Air Force have so that is also done the wing well this was an interesting thing reason being the center of the wing actually uh, is all white whereas the rest of the wing surface is gray first what I did was I painted up the the chrome uh, leading edge slots of the wing uh, after that I masked it off and then I painted up the white here uh, once that was done I masked off the white and then painted up the grays and once the grays were done then I simply uh, you know put a little bit of masking here and painted up the orange edges uh, which are present on the uh, IL-76 wings as you can see there 
So same thing has been done on the underside. You can see the detail is coming out pretty well. And the last thing is the fuselage. So this has also been done. Uh, of course, you can see the gray paint underneath here. Uh, it has been masked because uh, I had painted the, the upper surfaces uh, were supposed to be painted white. So I've done that as well. Uh, then I masked off the undersides and masked with uh, Tamiya masking tape out here and then painted the the entire blue line that goes from the front of the nose right up to the tail of the IL-76 on both sides. So that is done. The next step is to unmask and see how well the painting has gone. So I'm going to unmask right here. And that seems to be a good thing uh, as well uh, apart from this little blemish out here right near the window I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out overall uh, just these uh, little touch-ups here and there I think it's quite satisfactory all right so welcome back and here we are I have finished this uh, model today and as you can see it is all painted up everything is done all the uh, gloss coat is done the decals are done um, let me just quickly take a better view of it yeah I hope you're able to see it now couple of issues that I uh, wanted to talk about here um, in this case so one is uh, this the entire cockpit structure the glass structure of it this entire piece is one single piece now as per the instructions it says that this has to be assembled somewhere in the end but if you assemble it in the end after all the painting and everything it ends up leaving this uh, nasty line out here there was no way I could avoid that because I did it in the end I would suggest that you I mean you mask the the uh, the glass windows and you attach the section then fill up this uh, little line over here and then you start with the painting and everything uh, good parts about this are uh, that the engines here uh, they simply slide in and slot in and fix themselves with this uh, with the engine pylon out here so I can just uh, you know attach them like so and the same goes for the inboard engine as well it's very simple you can just slide them in and it attaches itself into the pylon now I'll quickly show you uh, how the wing structure actually looks so this is not fixed yet and that's the reason why you see this line over here uh, if I glue it uh, it will get fixed and uh, you know this line will no longer be visible but I have left it like that because uh, this is ultimately going to go to uh, a person who got this made for himself so it's as simple as just pushing it upwards and the entire wing section comes off uh, so the fit here is good it's really nice uh, the entire wing section as you can see it has come off so you can literally assemble that in the end so all these uh, constituent parts like the engines you know they can simply be uh, taken off uh, I have left it like so because this ultimately has to be shipped off so all the constituent parts including the the tail section can very easily be uh, taken off and assembled back so uh, all in all I'm done with this uh, kit uh, I really enjoyed making it especially in this uh, the white livery this is the older IL-76 livery you must have already seen the story around this that I've uh, uh, posted recently uh, the story of this particular IL-76 number K2878 uh, it's an interesting story if you really want to you can go and have a look at that post uh, all in all great kit to work with except for those little issues 
some issues that you can be careful of while you are assembling and building this thank you very much for watching i'll see you again next time